10 questions Christians can't answer. Question number one. When Noah's Ark landed, how did the kangaroos make it back to Australia? Question number two. If the ark was covered in pitch or tar to make it watertight, it also made it airtight. How did the animals survive more than one or two days living in complete darkness without any fresh air? Remember, the rain lasted 40 days and 40 nights. Noah couldn't open the window in the top. Question number three. Since Adam and Eve didn't know right from wrong before eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, why did God then punish them for something they didn't understand they were doing? Question number four. Why would God place a forbidden tree in the garden so close to his innocent creation and allow Satan to tempt them into eating from it, all the while looking on without doing a thing to prevent it? Question number five. When the women went to Jesus' empty tomb, was the stone already rolled away, or did an angel roll it away after the women got there? Question number six. On the first day of the week, when Jesus rose from the dead, how many women went to the tomb, and which ones? Question number seven. If you believe the creation account in Genesis is mere allegory, then why don't you throw out Paul's epistles? Because he believed that the creation account was a historical fact. Question number eight. How many donkeys did Jesus ride in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Was it one donkey, like Mark, Luke, and John say? Or was it two donkeys, like Matthew said? Question number nine. Matthew and Luke both provide genealogies for Jesus, going all the way back to Adam. Using both of those lists, who was Joseph's father? Question number 10. Was Jesus crucified on the first day of Passover, like the Gospel of John says, or the next day, like the other three Gospels say? Ten more questions Christians can answer. Question one. The Bible tells us that God sacrificed his only son so that we could go to heaven. But the Bible also tells us that he raised his son back from the dead again. If God didn't really lose his son, then how is that a sacrifice? Question two. If God is all-knowing and all-powerful and has everything under control, why does he keep asking for money every Sunday? Question three. The Bible tells us that God regretted making Saul king. But if that's the case, doesn't that mean God didn't know the future? Because if he knew he was going to regret making Saul king, he would have never done it in the first place. Question four. If every complex design requires a designer, who designed God? Question five. If nothing can come from nothing, then how did God create the universe out of nothing? Question six. If something can come from nothing, why do we need God to create the universe? Question seven. If everyone who ever lived prior to Jesus could get into heaven by simply believing God, like Abraham did, doesn't that make Jesus a little superfluous? Question 8. The Bible tells us that God isn't willing that anybody should perish, but His Holy Word has been corrupted through the ages by mankind. So doesn't that mean God either allowed it to be corrupted, or He was unable to keep it from being corrupted? Question 9. In the book of James, God instructs Christians on what they should do when they get sick. They're supposed to pray and lay hands on the sick person, and God promises to heal them. So why do you ignore God's command and run to science every time you get sick? Whoa! Question 10. The Bible tells us that Jesus threw a huge temper tantrum in the Jewish temple. He actually made a whip and whipped these people and drove them out of the temple, but not before overturning their tables and spilling their money everywhere. The Bible also tells us that Jesus called a Canaanite woman a dog. 
and Jesus insulted the Pharisees by calling them derogatory names at every turn. Jesus also lied to his own disciples. They asked him if he was going to the feast. He said, no, my time's not yet come. And he turns around and goes to the feast. Jesus also condones slavery, and he did not denounce the crimes of rape or pedophilia. Not only that, Jesus taught that if you call somebody a fool, you were in danger of going to hell. Then he turns around and calls several people fools. Not only that, the Bible tells us that Jesus explicitly upheld the ghastly Mosaic law that required children to be killed if they became unruly. Is this the person we should be emulating? No face on this one.